हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल दैट इज़ नर्सिंग ट्रिक्स आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेल एंड इफ यू हैव नॉट सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल प्लीज डू सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल एंड हिट द बेल आइकन टू गेट द लेटेस्ट नोटिफिकेशन फ्रॉम माई चैनल आई स्टार्टेड ऑफ विद अ लोअर रेस्परेटरी ट्रैक डिसऑर्डर इन विच इन दिस वीडियो आई विल बी कवरिंग विद अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक आई रिपीट इट इज़ अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक एंड यू विल सी दिस क्वेश्चन इन योर एग्जाम्स एज वेल this is bronchiolitis so i am starting off the video before starting this video i request you to kindly subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you will get the notification whenever i will upload the next topic which will be pneumonia then let uh, let me start this topic so the bronchiolitis bronchiolitis the definition says that it is the acute lower respiratory tract infection here you can see it is a l r t i which i have written this is the acute lower respiratory tract infection and it is most commonly seen in the infants and uh, the most common age group is 1 and 6 months of the age group and it occurs most commonly in the winters and the spring season and the in what happens in the bronchiolitis basically is there is a inflammation of the bronchioles which are present in the lungs so the definition if you will combine this four points how you can make the definition by combining this four points that it is an acute lower respiratory tract infection which is most commonly seen in the infants it occurs usually in the winters and spring season and it is an inflammation of bronchioles moving on to the causative organism very important the causative organism of the bronchiolitis is the respiratory syncytial virus i repeat rsv so this particular disease is caused by the virus and the name of the virus is the respiratory syncytial virus which is rsv and the other groups which are also which can lead to the bronchiolitis it can be the influenza group and the second one it can be the pneumonia the in the influenza group you can see the para influenza virus adenovirus can lead to the bronchiolitis and the other one in the pneumonia mycobacterium pneumonia can also lead to this particular condition which is known as the bronchiolitis so the causative organism most common causative organism is the respiratory syncytial virus and the others can be of the influenza group and can be of the pneumonia group so the one important thing or you can say the thing to note here is that this particular we know that iga it is present in the colostrum and it, it can uh, go from the it or it, it can pass from the breast milk to the to the uh infant so you will see that because of which uh, there are very less chances of an infant being hospitalized with the acute bronchiolitis so it is because of the high number of iga which is present in the first 6 months of the age group so this is to note here so causative organism we are done with next is the the pathogenesis or you can say the pathophysiology here you can see the pathophysiology so what happens the rsv which stands for the respiratory syncytial virus it affects the epithelial cells so the epithelial cells of the bronchioles are affected by this particular virus and what happens as soon as this virus affects the epithelial cell the cells of the bronchioles are the ciliated cells so these ciliated cells of the tract they gets swollen up and which will affect so this swell, uh, this swelling of the uh, bronchioles or the ciliated cells which is affected by the rsv the membrane of these cells they join with the unaffected cells so here we can see that along with the affected cells the unaffected cells are also uh, they are affected by the rsv and then after joining with the unaffected cell it forms the multinucleated cells or you can also known as the syncytia though they form the multinucleated cells 
now the inflammation which is there in the in the ciliated cells what will happen because of this inflammation it will lead to the edema first this is very uh, you know this is very obvious that it will lead to edema there will be thickening of the mucosa which is there uh, innermost lining there will be formation of the mucus plug when the virus and the immunity of our body they will fight with each other we will have the debris in the fourth thing we will have the cellular debris so you can see here first thing that will be there is the edema the thickening of the mucosa the formation of the mucus plug will be there and there will be a cellular debris now we know that the bronchial lumen the lumen is already narrow in the infants it is very narrow and further there is a reduction in the this lumen because of the edema thickening of the mucus formation of the mucus plug and the cellular debris it will further reduce the lumen and we know the if the radius if the radius is decreased the airway resistance will increase so increase in the airway resistance will lead to the uh, this decrease in the radius will lead to the resistance in the airway and this marked airway resistance which occurred because of this reduction in the radius both during inspiration and expiration it will lead to the the respiratory acidosis it will lead to the respiratory acidosis now let me explain you that how this will lead to the respiratory acidosis so the this marked increase in the airway resistance what will happen the bronchioles we know that normally the bronchioles are the bronchioles are partially collapsed in the expiration so what happens the air which is going out of the uh, out of the lungs will be severely restricted and because of which there will be trapping of the air in the alveoli so in the alveoli you will see that there will be the trapping or in the uh, of the air so in this these alveoli there will be trapping of the air so the air will remain here so what will happen if this trapping is partial if this trapping is partial or if this trapping can also be complete if it is partial then there will be emphysematous changes and but if it is complete it will lead to the atelectasis if it will lead to the atelectasis and due to the diminished perfusion and the ventilation ratio the hypoxemia will occur and there will be retention of the retention of the carbon dioxide and this carbon dioxide retention will ultimately lead to the respiratory acidosis will lead to the respiratory acidosis so in the pathophysiology we know that the child if it is suffering from the suffering from bronchiolitis the child will land can land up into the can land up into the respiratory acidosis now let us just quickly revise what we have seen till now we have seen the bronchiolitis the definition of the bronchiolitis says that it is an acute lower respiratory tract infection which occurs most commonly in one and six months of the age group and most common season is winter and spring and the it is inflammation of bronchioles the causative organism is respiratory syncytial virus others are also involved like influenza group can be there or it can be mycobacterium pneumoniae and the important thing to note here is that the 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 episode or you can say the incidence of the acute res, acute bronchiolitis is very less commonly seen in the children or the in the infant why because because of the uh, transfer or because of the transfer of the iga in the colostrum in the first 6 month through the through the breast milk and the pathophysiology says that it affects the epithelial cells the ciliated cells they got swollen up and they will also affect the unaffected cell membrane they will form multinucleated cells or syncytia and the inflammation will lead to the edema thickening of the mucus formation of mucus plug and the cellular debris will be there so these four conditions will lead to the further decrease in the radius or you can say the lumen 
bronchial lumen and we know the condition that airway resistance it is the inversely proportional to the radius of the lumen and the further reduction of the lumen markedly it will markedly increase the airway resistance both during inspiration and the expiration and if it is there in the expiration what will happen the air will be trapped partially or completely onto the into the alveoli and if it is partially uh, trapped in the alveoli it will lead to the edematous changes and if it is completely trapped then it will lead to the respiratory acidosis i have already explained that how it will lead to the respiratory acidosis now we will see the clinical features of the bronchiolitis so i'm just rubbing this and i will write the clinical features of the bronchiolitis by the time you can just copy what i have told you just now i have not written everything onto the board you can just listen to the voice and you can write down so okay now let me write so the clinical features clinical features of bronchiolitis so the sign and symptoms you know which uh, the difference between the sign and symptom is sign which we can see or which we can hear like wheezing okay and the symptom is which patient can tell so the first upper respiratory tract infection with uh, the incubation period of this respiratory tract infection is 3 to 7 days if someone asks you the incubation period it is 3 to 7 days okay now let me tell you the features or the clinical features of the bronchiolitis here so the first feature is the rhinorrhea is the running nose pharyngitis coughing and sneezing any ear infection and the high grade fever so rhinorrhea pharyngitis coughing sneezing possible ear or eye infection and your intermittent high grade fever is the features of the uh, your bronchiolitis and if it is it progresses to the lower respiratory tract infection then the features are air hunger wheezing hyperinflammation of the lungs or inflation of the lungs emphysema respiratory acidosis atelectasis then dyspnea crackles diminished breath sounds on auscultation increase in the anterior posterior diameter of the chest you know the reason behind this increase because of the trapped in air then increased resonance in the lungs so i repeat the clinical features i have written here and if it is progresses to the lower respiratory tract infection it will lead to the i am writing here air hunger it will lead to the wheezing so wheezing is also characteristic feature of asthma hyperinflation hyper inflation of the lungs emphy emphysema then respiratory acidosis atelectasis see once you know the pathophysiology of some condition you can write the pathophysiology in detail the uh, you know the pathophysiology if you know the pathophysiology of any disorder you can write the clinical features of that particular disorder so these are the clinical features of the bronchiolitis now let me just move on to the diagnostic features okay diagnostic features or the diagnostic investigation or what all investigations are to be done in order to rule out this particular condition
okay so the diagnosis how you will make first diagnosis how you will make x-ray in x-ray what you will see so you will see hyperinflation of lungs and also you will see the and also you will see the infiltrates in x-ray second you will see that your diaphragm is pushed down then you will see the lung field is translucent you will see the leukocyte count remains normal or it can be it can be slightly elevated and also you can go with the rapid test you can also see the rapid test in this rapid test monoclonal antibodies on the nasopharyngeal aspirate can identify the rst in this particular rapid test so in the diagnosis we can uh, we can go with the x ray we can also go with the uh, rapid test x ray will show the hyperinflation or infiltrates diaphragm is pushed down lung field will be translucent leukocyte count will be normal or it will be slightly elevated the rapid test you can go with the rapid test also in which the monoclonal antibodies are used on the nasopharyngeal aspirate in order to identify the rsv now so this was all about the diagnosis so we have seen the definition causative organism pathophysiology clinical features and the diagnose diagnosis now let's this next move on to the the very important topic which is the treatment any doubt anywhere please do comment and write in the chat box so that i can i can solve your your queries next is the treatment now what is the treatment for the bronchiolitis so the treatment if you have to just see in the nutshell is the cool and humidified air fluid airway maintenance and the medication i repeat it is cool and humidified air fluid therapy airway maintenance and the medication cool and humidified atmosphere it can be given at home also and the respiratory distress syndrome if it increases or cannot maintain then what we will do then we have to hospitalize the child if the distress increases in that case we have to hospitalize the child so c stands for the cool and humidified air which can be also provided at home the fluid the airway and the medication now first thing is the nurse you have to nurse the child in a humid atmosphere so we have told you that in the humid at atmosphere you have to nurse the child in the sitting position at 30 degree or 40 degree head and neck is to be elevated and the moist oxygen should be given continuously to the child so very important that moist oxygen is to be given to the child for very uh, you know very sick child 60% oxygen is to be given to the child through hood pulse oximetry should be performed regularly in order to keep the the saturation of oxygen for more than 92% fluid and electrolyte fluid and electrolyte uh, should be maintained in the child now very important thing in the treatment part is that the antibiotics don't have any role i will write antibiotics have no role to play okay 
important point to note down the ribavirin ribavirin it is an antiviral drug agent which has no role in the treatment of infants who were previously healthy so no role in the previously healthy and now they are affected with the bronchiolitis what it what it uh, what is the role of ribavirin it it shortens the course of disease in the infants with associated disorder so if bronchiolitis is associated with some other disorder then it can be given and it shortens the course of the disease so next is ribavirin it is delivered by the nebulizer it is delivered by the nebulizer 16 hours a day and it is delivered in it is given through nebulizer for 16 hours a day for 3 to 5 days for 3 to 5 days then next drug that is given is so first is the ribavirin it is given through the nebulizer the next drug which is given is your beta 2 adrenergic drugs or ipratropium you can say ipra ipratropium is given but it is not recommended for the child less than 6 month okay ipratropium which is beta 2 adrenergic drug and it is not recommended for the infants less than 6 month cpap can be given if there is a respiratory failure and ecmo can also be given so this is these the this is the treatment in treatment we have seen ribavirin ipratropium cpap and ecmo can be given to the child with this particular condition which is the your bronchiolitis now when we are talking of talking about this particular condition we also should know the prophylactic prevention of the bronchiolitis so very important to note here is that we should know the we should know the prophylactic prophylactic prevention now in the prophylactic prevention it can be done with the rsv igiv and pelivi zumab so this rsv igiv it is given in the iv preparation it is iv preparation of igg it provides the neutralizing antibodies against type a and b strain the doses and how you will give the doses first dose then next dose is given after every after every month and this is not for the patient if the child is having any type of chd congenital heart disease and that to the cyanotic disease it is not to be given in this these particular children then pelvizumab which is the most commonly most favored drug and it is given im and do not interfere with the uh, it it is it doesn't mit interfere with the measles mumps rubella and any vaccine and it can be given in the child with the with the cyanotic or congenital heart disease so i hope this prophylactic prevention is clear to you that pelvizumab is the most favored drug which is given in this particular condition now next is the nursing care and the nursing care management we have seen so the separate room should be given if the child is suffering from this particular condition so we have to very much sure that the in the nursing management separate room is to be given then standard precautions are to be taken like contact and standard precautions like hand washing not to touch the nasal mucosa use gloves and gown while entering the patient's room then diminish the number of visitors visitors to mostly you have to say that visitors are not allowed single patient assignment single patient assignment should be preferred because nursing care for rsv patient not to care 
the nursing care if this uh, particular nurse is giving the that nurse should not care for the other patient because of the copious nasal secretion what will happen there will be no feeding so you have to instruct the mother to store the their milk appropriately for the further use because of the copious nasal secretion what will happen the child will not be able to take something so you have to instruct the mother to store the milk and you parents can be taught how they have to use the nasal drop what is the action of the drugs what is the mechanism of action of the drugs and small amount of fluids like 5 to 10 ml can also be encouraged to the child so in the nursing management see nursing management is not something which you have to study uh, very separately whenever you are doing the whenever you are studying the clinical features that time only you have to study the you have to study the uh, nursing management also okay so this was all about the bronchiolitis so let us just revise what we have seen in the bronchiolitis so we have seen the definition we have seen the causative organism we have seen the pathophysiology we have seen the clinical features we have seen the treatment and we have seen the prophylactic prophylactic prevention and we have seen the nursing management very important is pathophysiology if you are clear with the pathophysiology the entire topic is clear to you any doubt do write in the comment box so that i can answer your queries in the next video i will be dealing with the pneumonia so please if you have not subscribed the channel subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon so that you will get the notification of the next video which will be on the pneumonia for this uh, i am just signing off for this video thank you